You're not even technically born yet, but life's already fed up with you. You're floating somewhere off the coast of nowhere, 200 meters down, inside an egg that's barely holding it together. And then, crack. The shell splits like a bad marriage. Boom. Welcome to the ocean. Population. Things that want you dead. You're two inches long. Transparent. Blind. And you wiggle like an undercooked noodle in the middle of a sushi buffet. You're not a predator. You're not even prey. You're a snack. A soft, shiny, slow-moving piece of future regret. And guess what? Something with teeth just noticed you. It's a mackerel. With rage issues. And it's coming in hot. You panic. You twitch. You try to swim, but you don't swim. You just vibrate in place like a sad phone on silent mode. Boom. The mackerel lunges. But misses. Why? Because another predator, a bigger one, just ate the mackerel. You're not alive because you're lucky. You're alive because something else was tastier. That's your origin story. Not chosen. Not strong. Just ignored. Congratulations. You're an oarfish. The world's longest bony fish. A creature so cursed, sailors used to think you were a sign of the apocalypse. And honestly, they weren't wrong. You're five days old, barely two centimeters long, about the size of a soggy Pringle that's lost its will to crunch. You've spent your whole life, so far, doing absolutely nothing, just floating, shimmering, wiggling like a rejected spaghetti strand with abandonment issues. But now, you feel it. That annoying emptiness in your gut. Hunger. Real hunger. The I'd eat my own fin if it tasted like anything kind of hunger. And then, you see it. A copepod. Dumb. Tiny. Floating like a clueless snack balloon. You lock in. Focus. Charge. It's not elegant. It's not even aimable. But somehow, miracle of marine clumsiness, your mouth hits the target. You bite. More like, squish. Congratulations. You've officially eaten something that didn't come out of your egg. But hold the celebration, because you're not the only one watching. Something's moving above you. Thin, slender, mean-looking. A ribbon eel. Like a shoelace possessed by pure evil. You freeze. No blinking. No twitching. Just existential dread in high definition. You pretend to be plankton. Stupid. Still. Not worth it. It works. The eel drifts past. You're alive. Barely. You're three months old now, around 40 centimeters long, about the size of a school ruler, if it had gills and no ambition. You've grown fast, which is weird because you barely eat. Turns out plankton and copepods aren't calorie dense, but hey, they're bite sized. Your body starts changing. Your silver skin gets shinier, helps reflect light in deep, dark waters. Your long, ribbon like tail grows faster than the rest of you. You're slowly becoming more spaghetti like. You start drifting deeper, not because you want to, because your genes say it's time. At around 500 meters, the pressure tightens like a bad hug. It's cold, dark, silent. You barely see anything anymore, but you feel everything. Your swim bladder shrinks. Your organs shift to handle life in high pressure. Your head flattens slightly. Your movement slows. You're not a surface fish anymore. You're entering the twilight zone the layer of ocean where sunlight dies and weirdness begins. Congratulations, you're officially a deep-sea introvert. Still watching? That means you're into this. You just watched a ribbon with fins descend into oceanic depression, and you're curious about what happens next? Then hit that subscribe button, because this fish's life is going way deeper than your ex's therapy notes. You don't want to miss what comes next. Trust me, you're two years old now, about two meters long. Roughly the size of a kayak that forgot how to float emotionally. For once, you're not alone. Another oarfish drifts nearby. Same age, same size. You don't talk. You don't touch. But you swim, side by side. Which, for your species, is basically a full-blown friendship. Then, everything shifts. The water tightens. The shadows pulse. Movement. A lancet fish. Slick, fast, jagged. It doesn't hesitate. It hits your partner first. One strike. Gone. No scream. No splash. Just missing. You turn too late. The second strike grazes you. A sliver of pain cuts across your flank like a signature in blood. You spiral. Drift. Still alive. But now, alone again. And this time, it stings. Not just the scar. The silence. 
You're three years old now, almost three meters long, about the size of a stand-up paddleboard, if it had social anxiety and commitment issues. Your body feels different, warmer currents, strange hormones, and a smell in the water, not food, something else. You follow it, slow, silent. There, another oarfish, same shimmer, same stillness. You drift side by side, facing the current. No sound, no touch, just instinct. And then, release. You both let go. Clouds of eggs, clouds of sperm, swirling, mixing, vanishing into the abyss. It's not mating. It's molecular roulette. No romance, no bond, just biology. Moments later, the other oarfish disappears. You stay still. Heart slow. Mission complete. But hunger hits. Fast, hard. You drift upward, toward shallower waters, where light filters in like broken glass, and movement twitches just ahead. A squid, small, wounded, dying. You lunge, mouth open, suction ready. You swallow it whole. And inside that dying squid, something smaller, alive, hidden, waiting. Not food, a parasite. You don't feel it, not yet. You're ten years old. A full decade of floating, feeding, and avoiding everything with teeth. You're nearly 6.5 meters long now, about the size of a city bus, if that bus lived in constant dread. You don't swim anymore. You drift. Every motion costs energy you don't have. Your muscles ache. Your vision's blurred. Your skin? Pale. Torn in places. Home to barnacles and memories. Your heart beats slower now. Not with fear. With fatigue. Then... A shadow, wider than anything you've seen in years. A six-gill shark, ancient, silent, starving. You could try to flee, but why? You face it. Not to fight, just to finish. The bite is clean. A single crack through the middle. Your body folds. Bones snap. Blood rises. And you? You don't scream. You don't struggle. You disappear. Ten years of silence. Gone in ten seconds of hunger. But maybe that's not tragedy. Maybe it's the ocean's only kind of mercy. Ten years, gone in one bite. But this isn't the saddest life in the ocean. Oh no. There's a creature out there whose story makes this one feel like a fairy tale. Want to meet it? You know what to do. Click the next video and bring tissues.